Well, gosh darn it. <clears throat> in the book of John, in chapter 16, as Jesus prepares to leave his disciples, be crucified, resurrected, glorified, <clears throat> he says to them, but now I go away to him who sent me. And none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things you, I'm sorry, because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. Turn to someone and say, hey, it's to our advantage if he goes away. No one ever does that. Why would you do that? You're, that's, you're supposed to do it. See, we're recording this. They're supposed to hear. Rrr, 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 rrr. So please go. Rrr, 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 rrr. To our advantage. Yeah, 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 whatever. There's always one apple polisher. <laughs> <laughs> Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment, because the ruler of this world is judge. If there was ever a paragraph I wish I had practiced, Let's see if I read it better the second time. But if it's the second time, it's as bad as the first time. I'm going to pretend like that's what I meant to do and go on. But now I go to wait. To... <laughs> but now I go away to him who sent me, and none of you ask me where are you going. But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. So far, so good. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin, because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness, righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. Better. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, and he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. Therefore, I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. Oh, he wanted to repeat himself. Well, why don't I say it a third time? Therefore, I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. If you haven't gathered, he is speaking of the Holy Spirit. At the risk of spoiling the punchlines, I would like to pose a question to people in the room. It's rhetorical. And to the people in TV land who can't answer back. See that? When exactly in Scripture does the Holy Spirit come? Well, we know that. We know the Holy Spirit shows up at the Feast of Pentecost. But the other things Jesus talked about were He's going to come and He's going to show you things. Where's an instance? Where's an instance? Where the Holy Spirit shows up and shows people things in the New Testament. He says he's going to teach you things. Well, when's that going to happen? He's going to declare things. He's going to reveal things. He's going to show you what I'm thinking. 
He's going to tell you what God's thinking. He's going to tell you what you're supposed to do. Jesus just said all that. Where does it happen in the New Testament? Where are the events of that happen? See, in the New Testament, I, I, I remember things like Jesus walked around and taught things, and he declared the mind of the Father. And Jesus went around and pointed out things and let his will be known, and he let the Father's will be known. He did all the things he said the Holy Spirit would do in regards to him and the Father. But where's the Holy Spirit, and when's the Holy Spirit doing it? And, and, and what did that look like? Well, I'm going to tell you that <clears throat> I'm a pretty good reader and I don't remember this ever happening. Because, you know, Jesus is a big fat liar. That's why. I mean, because it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. Wow. It's amazing. Has anyone ever reminded you to breathe in your life? Uh, breathe. Ah. Wow. Come on, let's take it. Come on, guys. We're all going to do it now. Come on. First one of the day. That's the first breath I've taken all day. What have you been doing all day? I've been breathing. That's the first conscious breath I took all day, and that's the only one that I'll remember, and that's the only one that felt that good. The presence and existence and the authority and the instruction... And the, and the E, all of the above, of the Holy Spirit were so commonplace to these people that they didn't have to like point it out. There's, there's, there doesn't need to be an account because these people lived and breathed. But it, it doesn't say on one page of the Bible, Paul lived and breathed. We know that. It's a given. And so was the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit instructing their lives, guiding their lives, revealing the Father to them, revealing the Son to them, revealing God's will for them, were commonplace. It was there. It was happening. <clears throat> what on earth is the Holy Spirit? What on earth is it? Because see, it's on earth. It's on earth. It's not in heaven. It's on earth. Read your Bible. Jesus went to be with the Father. And he sent the Helper. He sent the Spirit of God as our servant to serve us and to guide us and to teach us and to tell us how to talk and tell us how to live, tell us how to breathe, tell us how to function, tell us how to serve God and man in this life and how to lead, lead as many people to Christ as possible. And Jesus said, you're going to be better off when I'm gone because the thing you're going to need to live until the end of time is not present right now. i got to go home and send them to you. This is such a challenge for believers. If we're at a dinner party, and I tell you that I read this great biography on this brilliant artist, and you say, well, tell me all about it. I go, it's not, I, oh, I can't do it justice. I can't do it justice. I can tell you story after story, and you'll love it, but it's nothing compared to reading it. Nothing compared to reading it. I'm going to run home and get it for you. That's what Jesus said. You think this has been fun. Wait till I'm not here and the Holy Spirit gets here. That's when the party starts. Well, we're Christians. We're not Holy Spiritians. So what does that mean? I didn't name you Christians, by the way. I didn't do it. See, I named stuff. I, 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 I've named my children, I've named my pets, but I've named my creations, my songs. I've named them. I've named my records with a point. What's at the heart of this? What is the, what is the center of this? Well, I wouldn't have named you people Christians. Because the word is a misnomer. The word is a misnomer. Because Christian says we're followers of Christ. 
And while it's not untrue that we are followers of Christ, the sentence isn't finished. We are follow, followers of Christ as he leads us to God, the Father. So we're fatherings. I hate to say it, we should probably be Jews. We should probably be Jews. That almost makes more sense. Because whatever people were, when they really knew the true and living God in the Old Testament, that's who we are. We know the true and living God in the manifestation we have been offered for our, our, our period in time. So, you know, so, well, I, Godians, I like that because I've been called a Hellion. So God, I'm a, no, I don't like, I don't like a Hevian, Hevanian. No, I, I, I'm a Jew. I like Jew. I, I like the fact that I'm Jewish because I have a lot to fall back on when I talk to people. So I can say, I'm a Messianic Jew. Now that makes a lot of sense. As a Messianic Jew means I'm a Jew who believes the Messiah has come. That's exactly accurate. That's the best description of what I am. Though I, I, I mean, I don't think, anyone who knows me knows, I don't think like this until I start thinking about it. I don't wake up every day and go, ha, 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 this is what I am. No, I just, I'm just, I'm just Paisley. And I have a very distinct relationship with the Trinity of the true and living God in the three persons that he has revealed to me through his actions, his deeds, and his presence, and his, his word. I have a specific relationship with God the Father that is not the same as the relationship I have with Jesus. It's not. They are one, but they have different components, different functions, different place in my life. I don't want to reduce God to his own creation, but nature has various personalities. There's a big difference between a tornado and flowers. The Holy Spirit has a completely different place in my life than God the Father. Although, all three aspects of the Trinity are in the exact same place at the same time. I feel no responsibility in ever making that make sense to another human being. I really don't. I did not create God. He created me. <coughs> I have a hard enough time explaining myself. <clears throat> I saw that. But, what I will say, what I will say, is that Christians come in all shapes and sizes and flavors, and everyone who is a born-again Christian or a we need to receive Jesus as our Savior to be saved from hellfire Christian are the people I'm talking about tonight. I'm not talking about I'm not talking about the people that say if I like the teachings of Jesus I'm a Christian. I like the teachings of David Bowie and that would make me a Bowieian. Seriously. You know, I, I've, I've heard people talk like that. And that's fine, but it's not accurate. They're not Christians. But then again, I don't like the word because it, con it con has a connotation that's not accurate. I only say I'm a Christian to people because it's an identifier that people immediately relate to. If I start saying I'm a believer or I'm a Messianic Jew or I'm a, you know, bonehead, it's confusing. You have to give people something they can work with. But, but we're tonight going to look at, at Christians. And the Christians we're going to look at are people like us. People like us who are convinced that Jesus is the only way to the Father. That Jesus lived and died for our sins 
and was resurrected and stands before God interceding for us and making it possible that if we just accept the provision he's given us, we, when we die, we get to spend eternity with God. How we got there, whether we were raised Christian or we were born again, those are the Christians I'm talking about. Okay, guys? TV land? Hi. Oh, you can make a donation to this ministry at www.paisleyankolovich.com. All right. In conclusion, oh, I'm not there yet. I'm talking to the Christians now, okay? I'm not talking to the so-called Christians. I'm not talking to the people who could care less about their soul and their salvation. Christians that just like the platitudes. By the way, Jesus wasn't a nice guy. So the people who say Jesus was such a good, I just followed Jesus and stuff like that. I'm like, what do you follow? He yelled at everybody. He put down everything around him and said, you're all doing it wrong. And if you don't do it like me, and do exactly what I say. You deserve what you get. I, I'm sorry. He acted just like a preacher. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't there all gooey and 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 uh, you know he, he didn't he didn't have like you know birds and butterflies tending to him. You know he had, he had a sharp tongue, sharp tongue. If you were his friend, you liked what he had to say. But if you were enemy. If you were his enemy, ooh, woe to you. Woe to you, broods, brood of vipers. So, that having been said, talking to the people that think the majority of the Bible is pretty much it, okay? I'm talking to the, these people now. And these people go through life calling themselves Christian. We all do. But to every single one of us, it means something a little different based on our understanding of and our relationship with the Trinity. Now, there's a movement right now that's anti-Trinityism, and, and I don't want to be in line with you at the pearly gates when this gets sorted out in the afterlife. But I'm not, I'm not going off on, I'm not going to do that tonight. I could, and I'd love to, so if anyone wants to sit me down and hear what I think of these people, I, you know, I feel very strong about it. And I'm right. See, the thing is, is that if you, if you teach something contrary to what Jesus Christ said in his name, that's heresy. That's evil. And that's intentional. Because he's very clear that there's three of them. He's very clear that they're all one, but he's very clear that there's three of them. Now, I can't explain to you what it's going to look like in heaven. You know, do three people walk around like this? You know, or the monkeys? You know? I mean, I don't know. Did they all merge? The orange, strawberry, and guava juice all end up in one glass? You know what I'm saying? I don't know. It's irrelevant because Jesus is right and we aren't. Period. <coughs> Let God be true and every man a liar. It doesn't matter how it plays out. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter what we get. Jesus referred to God as different than him. A different entity than him, even though they were one. And he referred to the Holy Spirit as a separate entity than him, though they were one. And he referred to the Holy Spirit as a separate entity than God, though they were one. I can't do any better than that. I, see, what's so weird, what's so weird is, I love spaghetti. I love the stuff. I, 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 I can't tell you how much I like pasta. I almost never eat it because, well, it shows. But I love the stuff, and I love marinara sauce, especially if it's sweet. I love the stuff, and I love too much sauce on my pasta. Whatever people put on, I go, whatever you think is too much, start there. Okay? I love this. But if you have never tasted pasta, to the day I die, I could not explain to you what it tastes like. 
couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't define it for you in a way. And I have a very hard time explaining marinara sauce if you've never had a tomato or seen a tomato. I'd have no idea how to explain it. I say it's this red stuff that tastes sweet and kind of salty and when you warm it up it tastes really good on the food, but you'd have no frame of reference. <clears throat> it doesn't mean I don't know my pasta and my sauce. It means you don't. And trying to explain the things of God to people who don't know them is very much trying to explain something you experience internally to someone that's never had it. How would you define ice cream to someone who's never had it? We would compare things. Well, it's kind of like ice cream, but it's like this. It's kind of like spaghetti, but it's like this, you know? You know, what's farfalli? Well, you've had spaghetti. You know how spaghetti streams? Well, farfalli is like made in bow ties. Well, what if you've never had spaghetti and you've never seen a bow tie? Good luck on that one. But I'm talking about God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit as the most important things ever invented. Almost impossible to explain to someone who's never experienced them. But, but, whose fault is that? I mean, whose fault is that? If a person has nothing they can compare that they've experienced in their life to the attributes and the experiences of God, that's from a series of choices or influences. Not necessarily aggressive, God-hating choices, but influences. That they said, okay, I'll accept that influence in my life that have kept them from experience something, experiencing something that was given to them freely. You can go into almost any church in the country and never hear the mention of the Holy Spirit. Except in those churches. <laughs> That's it. But Jesus said, and I, you notice he kept repeating himself. In each paragraph he said everything two or three times that this was big stuff. This was big stuff. But the majority of Christians, like the ones like, you know, like, like us, who sincerely love the Lord, have no experience or knowledge or understanding of the Holy Spirit. Now, I have a bit of a photographic memory when I read. And I remember reading Jesus saying, Why do you say you love me, but don't do what I say? But I just said, Christians, and they love the Lord, but they just don't have... Well, why do you say you love me and not do what I say? Well, we do love... Oh, wait a minute. Do you? I love cupcakes. Not in any way, shape, or form the way I love the Lord. Think about it. What does it mean to love the Lord? I think it means doing what he says. Making it your life's work to do what he says means you love the Lord. Not that you love the concept of the Lord or you love the presence of the Lord or you love what you get for knowing the Lord. Now, 
Jesus said we were to wait for the Helper. That when the Helper came, everything was going to make sense. Everything was going to come together. We were going to have all power and authority and ability to replicate his behavior, his passion, his love, his wisdom, his miracles, and more for the purpose of taking care of one another and leading others to Christ. It's like sending you into the kitchen to cook without any electricity. It's like, what has happened to keep us from experiencing the Spirit in full? Well, the devil has happened. The devil has happened. The devil has said, hey, I got an idea. Why don't you guys go out and shoot some blanks? Why don't you guys go out and shoot some blanks? There, you'll be really effective if you don't have anything to work with. <laughs> if you don't have any knowledge of anything in it, if you, if you do manage to pick up a gun, there's nothing in it. I remember that great movie that came out when I was a kid, Bugsy Malone, which was a bunch of kids pretending to be grown-ups, and they were gangsters, and it was a musical. Jodie Foster was in it when she was a kid. Scott Baio was in it when he was a little kid. And... They, um, they shot um, whipped cream. They would shoot at people and whipped cream would come out of their guns. I love that. It was real cute. Because nothing happened. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. And that's what the devil wants. The devil wants us to, um, to fire blanks. To be useless, to be helpless, and to be completely in the dark. But Jesus said that he would send the Holy Spirit and we'd be in the light. I don't think he said we'd automatically be in the light because if we were in the light, automatically because the Holy Spirit would were here, so would the whole world. There needs to be some kind of aggressive behavior on our part where we tap into the Holy Spirit somehow and that has to do with how did you become a Christian? How did it happen? What, what happened to you? Most people, I had a day where I said, I want Jesus in my heart. I want this. I want this in my life. I want these things. I want my salvation. Okay. Great. Was there ever a point in time where you separated the aspects of the Trinity and said, okay, well, Jesus is this, but what does God the Father actually do? And what does God the Father actually mean? And what does this mean in my relationship with the Trinity? You know, maybe have did, did maybe some people had a day where they had a specific moment where they opened their heart to God the Father. Well, I know I had a day where I specifically received the Holy Spirit. See, I I, I received the Lord in a, in one of those churches, and I didn't know. So on Wednesday, I raised my hand and said I wanted to be a Christian. And on Sunday, people gathered around me and prayed for me to receive the Holy Spirit. And we all spoke in tongues. And I thought that was supposed to happen to everybody. I had no idea. I had no idea this wasn't everybody. My Bible clearly says it's everybody. There's no question about the baptism of the Holy Spirit being for everybody. There is no question about the gift of a prayer language being for everybody. There is no scripture in the Bible that contradicts what I'm saying, and the one that people use is inaccurately quoted. There is a scripture that says, some people prophesy, some people heal, some people teach, some people speak in tongues. God distributes his gifts as he sees fit. But there are not enough believers that understand that there are two types of instances of speaking in tongues in the Bible, or what you guys call, I don't mean you guys, right?